Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're doing a recap of Ready to Love Season 4, The X Factor. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. If you like the video, smash that like button and also feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. So Tommy Miles and his wife uh, had the girls or the ladies over at their house instead this week. And the women also have the power this week to make a decision on which guy or guys will be eliminated. Now, the thing that's going to be the biggest topic this week that Tommy and his wife let the ladies know is that they are going to be meeting, meaning the guys, with their exes so last week we saw the guys meet the friends or i should say the girls meet the friends but it's different so let's talk about our first couple now this meeting goes well so um you know while everybody's meeting an ex with when it came to chris and amber and that was because chris and amber won the same team Amber's ex wasn't there to cause any friction, be on her side, or to expose Amber. Now, everyone is seemingly rooting for Chris and Amber to keep moving forward without any complications. And even when Chris is saying he wants five kids, for some folks, that might have been a big red flag. But Amber, she shut it down immediately. She was like, you know, hey, if he wants five, I'm good with that. So we already know Amber definitely wants kids. And even if that means three to five children, hey, she's all good. And that's what counts. You know, if you're with somebody who don't want kids, and I think that was somebody like Chrysanthemum, don't line up with somebody who want kids. So these two definitely uh, match up well because they have a lot of things in common. They're very compatible. This is one of my favorite couples this season. I hope it lasts, but we shall see. So let's talk about some of the couples it didn't go well with. Well, that had to start with Ron meeting Alexis X, David meeting Liz's X, and we all know how that went. And then Jason, of course, meeting Kyra's X as well. And it didn't go as pleasant as just say the Chris and Amber uh, meeting went. So Ron started to really show how he really feels about religion. And that didn't sit well with Alexis. I mean, after all, she has seemingly played down her faith or at least made an effort to not come off like those people that Ron um, apparently has issues with. Um, it it kind of creates a almost you're not like the rest of them whole mentality when you look at how their relationship is thus far. However, when meeting her ex and how he talks to him about praying, Alexis seemed to be pretty much done with Ron after that. And, um, you know, she definitely is giving him the side eye. She's not feeling the fact you know, that that's something that, you know, she can actually side with. If he does not believe in Christianity or whatever his beliefs is, and she does believe that, you know, the spirituality there, she believes in Christ and prayer and all of that. If you two get together, you're going to be unevenly, uh, unevenly yoked, you know. So when he's telling you this is not something that he is really into, you need to listen to that. And then now you got some decisions to make. And I mean, she's definitely not going to choose between God and a man. So, and it's especially the fact, you know, her wanting her son to have a relationship with God. So that's definitely something that's just not going to fly. And she needs to do some thinking on that one. Now, after those two, let's get into David and Liz. Now, Liz presents uh, to us that off camera, David brought up Liz kissing Jason to his friends. And she also told her ex that when, you know, she was introduced and she didn't like that. 
And then you add how, you know, it seemingly looked that David acted around Liz's ex, who uh, basically has evolved into her big brother. Now, it seems that, um, you know, it seems like she is just as done with him as Alexis was as done with uh, Ronald. But rather than, you know, faith be an issue, David doesn't seem to like to take, well, the way that it looks, it seems like he's not taking accountability and seems to lack confidence when posed up against a, another man. Now, I don't know if that's shifted. Again, go check out the video, what he talks about with how his experience is on the show. But David, you know, he kind of backed down as Liz X asked him questions and it made it clear that he sees, you know, through s s the, what's happening with the two of them. And he definitely tells and makes sure that Liz takes off the rose-colored glasses that she has with him. So, I mean, that whole thing was a train wreck. Um, first, he was wondering why this man is even here. I kind of wish that as much as they brought the women's exes on, why not bring the guys' exes on? Because the friends are, are already going to stick up for their guys. We want to see what the exes are saying on the other side, too. So I kind of think they didn't, you know, they should have made that pretty much even instead of their friends last week, but their exes this week. So I would have be in, I would have been interested in seeing how that goes. But this guy who is her ex, that's now her big brother, as he called himself, I'm an alpha guy. I don't know what it's like to be weak. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought of that statement. But obviously, you know, um, David and him, it didn't sit well. The energy between all three of them was tense. She had already given him the heads up about what happened last week. So it just went south. So next, let's talk about Kyra and Jason. Now, um, honestly, despite Kyra thinking that she kind of have dibs, her ex may have kind of tainted that possibility. How? Well, while most of the exes seem to be on their side with their ex, Kyra's ex was ready to kind of put her on blast. He talks about her not being good with keeping a budget how she has communication issues. And for Jason, who is that guy who has put himself through therapy and was questioned about this by Kyra, the idea of dealing with someone who has problems communicating when upset present a major red flag that could kind of meet trouble for Kyra, you know, and especially being that Liz is right there with nobody soon to be distracting her. So I only think I wouldn't say throwing her on the bus. He was just keeping it real. It's one thing when you try to, you know, paint a picture of somebody just to be on their side versus telling the truth. Now, I don't know if this is a situation where her ex, where he's a vindictive ex and trying to throw her under the bus. But I would think that with Kyra being a business owner, I mean, you have to know how to manage your money. I mean, seriously, especially when it comes to tax issues and things like that. So, I mean, I would think that she knows what she's doing. So I don't know if I should take what the ex is saying as a grain of salt or what, but we'll see. So now that leaves us with Joel. Now, while Vernicia is still very much pro Joel and still holding on to the idea of being the first couple from ready to love to get married, it seems that the man is looking to be talked out of being with Renisha rather than being with her. And hence him asking in front of Renisha to her ex, is she clingy? Then Renisha bringing up Joel not calling when he decided to cancel plans, all of which pushed the idea Joel is comfortable with Renisha, maybe doesn't want to compete with Kyra or compete for Kyra. So he continues to, you know, entertain Venetia. So I don't know. Joel seems like a smooth talker. I don't know him personally, just my, what I'm seeing from the show. Who knows? He's a totally different guy in his own real life. But, you know, his whole thing of jumping up, talking about is she clingy and her exes were like, no, I don't see her as clingy. 
and she broke down the situation of the whole thing about he didn't call so she was supposed to automatically know nothing's happening no that's kind of high schoolish you you know i think these folks are from 30 to 50 years old at what point do you say or send a text or call and say listen i'm not going to be able to make it can we reschedule that's only less than 30 seconds for him to just not just basically blow her off with no response yeah that wasn't cool and i don't think that was very mature either so i mean he seemed like he got the message i don't know but i honestly don't see the compatibility there but we'll see how it ends up so let's talk about this interaction between um alexis and aj now she obviously talks about how she get butterflies when she's around him but she didn't know where aj stand and then all of a sudden he just basically like look i'm here you my number one and then he kisses her and then on the other side of the table we got uh liz and uh jason now jason was all all pro kyra but now he's looking into Liz's eyes and rubbing her legs and she's getting all googly eyed. Obviously, that whole thing with Ron is just pretty much south. But she definitely has her eyes on Jason. So because of David's insecurities and Ron's you know, issues with religion, they both end up at the bottom. But we don't know who got eliminated. And however, if one thing is clear, both pretty much, it wasn't a good look. And Ron is all but ready to argue with Alexis to the point of justifying. And then David, he's bent on getting the first word of the conversation. So he keep cutting Liz off. So we'll see what happened next week. So let's do our post notification shout out. This week, it goes to Tangi White. Thanks for engaging in the channel. I really appreciate it. And BH. Thank you as well. So until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you soon.